Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Fantasy Reaction Show. My name is Andrew Velez. I'm here with my co-host, Mr. Joel Dells. We are here to record our starts and sits of Week 7. Like we mentioned before on our last episode, we did miss Monday because we were enjoying some Monday night football. We were at the Jets and Bills game, unfortunately, for my brother, Mr. Dells. The Jets did lose a pretty heartbreaking game, but, of course, that also resulted in us double whammy missing the fantasy reaction show but we're here to catch up we're back here for our starts and sits of the week going to do some mailbag answer some of your guys's questions go over some injuries for this upcoming week and of course bye weeks if you guys have anybody on chicago you have anybody on the dallas cowboys stay away but before we get into any other fantasy content mr dells how you doing tonight Doing good, man. This is going to be week one. We get to see of Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, Garrett Wilson, this Jets offense. Uh, with that being said, none of those guys are on my start list. One of them might even be on my sit list. But if you guys were ever wondering, you know, how you ask these questions, how you get into the mailbag, follow us on Twitter every day, basically every Thursday, I should say. Uh, we tweet out, ask, uh, you know, ask the people that follow us what their questions are for the week, star sits, trades, who to drop, who to pick up. If you have any of those questions, obviously you can leave them in the comments, but Best place to do that at just on our Twitter because that's the one place we look when we do these mailbags. Um, but doing great, man. Uh, you know, Broncos just got a big W on the way to a big W, beating the Saints on the road. Both saw some two bad losses for baseball teams. Yankees lost a heartbreaker. Mets are Mets are running out of juice, I think, right now. About to go down 3-1 to the Dodgers. Um, but, yeah, man, other than that, doing good. We'll say it, it hurt terribly watching the Yankees get walked off on because Aaron Judge finally has his postseason clutch moment. Down two, hits a game tying homer stand, goes next at bat, hits a home run to to that break the tie. I was so sick after after what was a euphoric moment. We go and get it robbed from us. It was 2019 all over again. But nevertheless, we go back tomorrow and hopefully we can go up three one. But you mentioned it. I mean, you you have the Mets also kind of gagging. That kind of sucks. Hopefully the Mets can can figure it out for your sake. But you also talked about the Jets a little bit. Maybe we do talk about them in our starts and our sits. One definitely more than the other. I definitely was considering who I believe is probably your sit of the week as well. But regardless, usually I drop this at the end of the video. But if you are here watching this video, one, we thank you. But if you guys could leave a like on the video, let us know. It lets us know whether you guys are, are liking the content that we are dropping. If you're not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Turn on the notification bell so you know we go and we drop our videos like tonight. And, of course, when Weekly Blitz, Riv Academy, pick a side whenever we drop our videos there. But, Mr. Dells, without further ado, let's get into our starts and sits of the week, starting with the quarterback position. Who's your start of the week, sir? My start of the week is going to be Geno Smith going up against the Atlanta Falcons. Uh, I love both of these quarterbacks. Honestly, in this game, I was assigned between Kirk Cousins and Geno Smith. I think they're both fantastic starts. This is one of the biggest, highest over-unders of the week at 51 part at 51 points. And it's not just the quarterbacks I want, right? Like, of course, you want uh, DK Metcalf, Drake London, but even the ancillary pieces, right? If you have JSN in this game, Darnell Mooney, even, dare I say, Kyle Pitts, this is the type of game that you want to start these guys in because both of these offenses are going to be able to move the ball on the opposing defenses. And the Falcons, when you just look at their you know fantasy points against uh, for quarterbacks, about middle of the pack, right? They're sitting right now between 16 and 17. But that's really being carried by two weeks. Week one, they played Justin Fields, and he didn't have a good fantasy day. And then week four against Derek Carr, when kind of everything was starting to go downhill for the New Orleans Saints, the, the interior of the offensive line was getting banked up. They were able to shut down him as well. But Patrick Mahomes, Baker Mayfield, and Andy Dolan all had two or more touchdowns, all had 200-plus total yards. Um, I think Mahomes had, had some receiving yards, or excuse me, some rushing yards in there as well. So all these quarterbacks have been able to, to move the ball against the Atlanta Falcons, whether some of it was in garbage time, like that, that, that Dalton game. But take it how you can get it, right? So I like all the pieces in this game. But Geno Smith is due, number one, just for just for some touchdowns, right? He's leading the league right now in yards, I believe, but he's still not near the top in terms of touchdowns. He has one of the lower lowest touchdown rates in the NFL this season. So that's bound to bounce back. We know how great this passing offense can be. And, of course, you know, you got everyone healthy. Kenneth Walker's fully back. Of course, you got all the, the big three receivers with Ty Lockett, DK Metcalf, and JSN. So love Geno this week. I love the start. I was contemplating Kirk Cousins, no doubt, but then I wanted to have a little bit more of a conversation about my start of the week. And that's Mr. Baker Mayfield, who's breaking a record for starts of the week. I think we've made him a start of the week four out of the seven weeks so far, and deservedly so. He's been out of this world amazing. Right now, quarterback two on the season has four top five finishes. That is, we're seven weeks, four top five finishes, 
one time he hasn't had 20 fantasy points or more, and that was versus my Denver Broncos. Now, I have a question. Is there a path for Baker Mayfield to finish as the quarterback one? Now, I want to read you the rest of the schedule. One of the main reasons why I asked this question. I know Lamar Jackson seems untouchable. Right now, he sits at the court as the quarterback one. But with Baltimore this week, have Atlanta next week. Kansas City is going to be a tough matchup, but San Francisco, who's looked very, very beatable. You have a bye week after that, but you come back against the Giants, Carolina, Las Vegas. Chargers have been sneaky great so far. I'll give them their credit, even though I haven't loved the talent that they've faced. But then you finish with Dallas and Carolina again. The schedule's amazing. He's playing amazing football. He's there paired with Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. There's so much talent on this offense. Baker Mayfield is one of the league leaders in touchdowns. If I'm not mistaken, right now, he has the most passing, if not second mm-hmm. most. Maybe I could be off on that. No. But regardless, he's been playing out of his mind. Can he finish as the quarterback one, Mr. Dells? Number one is going to be difficult, but he could finish as like a top five, six guy, right? I'm looking at last season, Brock Purdy, quarterback six overall. That's kind of the path I think that that Baker has because we know he's not someone that's going to run the ball, have 500 rushing yards, you know, 70 rushing touchdowns. So he has to do this by getting a shit ton of touchdowns, right? He's going to throw. He's on pace for, you know, over 4,000 yards right now. He's top 10 in yards. But the reason why he's so high up high right now in fantasy is because his touchdowns have been insane. He has a 7.9% touchdown percentage. That's top three in the NFL. You have three guys right now. They're just complete outliers in certain terms of touchdown percentage. Jordan Love's at 8.2%. Sam Darnold's at 8%. Baker, 7.9%. Then the next highest is Josh Allen at 64 So right now, those three quarterbacks are really leading the pack, and that shows in their, in their fantasy output as well because all of those guys have been fantastic, especially Jordan Love when he's been healthy this year. Um, but top five, I think, is definitely doable. To get to number one, he's going to need something special. He's going to need some rushing touchdowns. He's going to need to to teeter with 5,000 yards, possibly even 40 touchdowns, because it's really difficult to do it just as a pocket passer. The one thing I will say that they kind of have, he kind of has going in his favor is Rashad White has always been kind of the the goal line back. Not kind of, he has been the goal line back for these last couple of seasons. And that role might be taken away, right? We'll see if Bucky Irving can be as dominant as as Rashad White has in these last couple of years, and, and maybe Sean Tucker gets utilized there as well. But the fact that Rashad White has struggled so much this year has led to Baker being able to throw all these touchdowns because they haven't really been able to rely on Rashad White in the run game. So number one overall, it's going to be difficult, but I think top five is really possible. No doubt. Listen, let's get into your, your running back start of the week, sir. Running back start of the week. We're going to go with Chuba Hubbard going up against the Washington Commanders. Okay. Every week, it's got to be someone against the Commanders. This week, it's going to be Hubbard. He's been one of the best running backs in football, right? Just eye test alone, when you're watching him on film, he's been fantastic. He's breaking tackles left and right. He looks explosive. Right now, he's top three in rushing yards. He's averaging over five yards per carry, top 10 in attempts. He's been a workhorse so far for the Carolina Panthers and has been one of the best picks in fantasy. This is a guy that was taken probably in the teens of your draft, right? Someone that was one of the last picks before you're taking kickers and defenses and what they're going to do against the commanders this week we already know they're going to be able to move the ball the commanders are going to be able to move the ball against the panthers it's probably going to be a pretty high scoring game commanders allowing the 11th most rushing yards per game and on top of that one thing i am following is we don't really know what's happening with deontay johnson this week on one hand it could just impact the offense overall because deontay's the clear number one on this team but if he is out, then you could see Hubbard possibly getting getting some more work there as well. He hasn't practiced him being Deontay Johnson, has practiced Wednesday or Thursday. He has done this the last couple of weeks where he doesn't practice, says he plays, goes out playing, and puts up like top 12 performances because that's what Deontay does when he has um, uh, Andy Dalton at quarterback. But if he's out, there's a chance of Leon Hubbard even more. Uh, my running back start of the week is going to be Mr. J.K. Dobbins. Obviously, J.K. Dobbins is very loved on this fantasy podcast. And for valid reason, right now, sits at the as the running back 15. And going up against the Cardinals, who give up the 10th most fantasy points to running backs. You look at Dobbins, kind of had a, a, a little minor skid, but then comes back against my Denver Broncos, just, miss, just misses 100 rushing, but does go for over 100 scrimmage yards because he was able to rack in a six-yard catch to put him over the top there and got into the end zone. But what stands out to me was that he saw his highest snap percentage on the season of 73% of snaps and going up against Arizona, who you obviously know their defense is super weak. And with their offense being as inconsistent as it's been, I think J.K. is going to be a major part of this offense from the start to the finish. And he's going to be one of those guys that we're going to be talking about at the end of the week. 
Yeah, I mean, he had 27, 28 opportunities last week. It was a career high for him. So Gus Edwards on the IR, he's just going to keep getting this work. But moving on to wide receiver, staying in the flames. Staying in the flames with Zay Flowers here. He had uh, another great game, two back-to-back games, uh, 100-plus yards. And last week, it, he should have had 200. He had 130 in the first half, and he finished with 130. He got nothing in the second half. For whatever reason, I don't know. But going up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, another game that should be high-powered on both sides, right? You look at the Baltimore Ravens, the number four scoring offense. Look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, number two scoring offense. Four of six games this year, Zay Flowers has had nine or more targets. I talked a lot about Zay Flowers in last week's episode, so I'm not going to go in and, and repeat everything I said. But basically, those two dud games were just two blowouts, right? Like you had that Buffalo Bills game, you had that Cowboys game. Those were really the only games where he did nothing for you. Other than that, when the games have been somewhat close, somewhat reasonable, Zay Flowers has been fantastic. He really looks like he has taken his, his game to another level this season. So I would be starting him as a top 12, top 15 receiver. I love that for the fact of, Zay Flowers had the the little lull to start the season, and we were all anticipating him to really take that next leap. But you see the way that Lamar Jackson, and I say this every year, it seems like, and and of course he makes me eat my words, but regardless, the improvement Lamar Jackson has made as a passer from two years ago to right now is incredible to me. This has been by far and away the most impressed I've ever been with Lamar Jackson. He just looks the most comfortable I've seen him in the pocket. But also, you know he has the big play, playmaking abilities. But what he's been able to do as a passer this season has overly moved me. And you see Zay Flowers now being productive. We're getting a little bit of shoddy B in there. Mark Andrews is now finally getting back involved in the offense these last couple of weeks. They can do no wrong. And, and I'm not even talking about the number one weapon in Derrick Henry. They've been super awesome. I love that that play. You want to talk about staying in the flames? Give me Terry McLaurin. Four straight weeks of double-digit points coming off a week where he was just the wide receiver five. Sitting at the current wide receiver 12 in PPR leagues. Going up against the Carolina Panthers. Right now they rank, they rank 12th in terms of points allowed to the wide receiver. But this is another one where I'd love to have a conversation, Mr. Dells, because Terry McLaurin, you could argue – his fantasy value, not just obviously in Dynasty, he's 29 years old. That that value may be not, not great, but in redrafts. Mm -hmm. The value for Terry McLaurin is the highest that it's been since maybe his first or second year in the league. And I brought this, I brought this up to you to I feel like our group chat a couple of weeks ago. And and really it stems from Jaden Daniels being in that situation, being as great as he has been. But the two picking up a connection from the Cincinnati Bengals game on. He's been dominant. He's been one of the consistent targets for Jaden Daniels. And he's getting into the end zone. That's really what's pushing him over the top. Right now, if I'm not mistaken, Terry McLaurin, he has he has four touchdowns on the season. He's been a dog in that regard. But really, how many wide receivers would you take? Let's not go over the cream of the crop top five, the Jamars, the Jettas, the the Nico Collins when he is healthy. Uh, let's just go over a next tier of guys. Terry McLaurin right now or Mike Evans? I'm still going Mike Evans there. Okay, I understand that. He does have the touchdown upside, but Terry's giving me a little bit of both. Maybe I'm, I'm continuing the trend of hating Mike Evans. I kind <laughs> of find myself leaning Terry McLaurin. For the fact that he's the best receiver on his team. I think Mike he Evans is. is the touchdown guy, but Godwin's proving this season, this season in particular, that he's the best receiver on his squad. Moving forward, Terry McLaurin or Brian Thomas? I would still go BTJ. Oh, you're you're low on Terry, and it's surprising. I, this is the thing about Terry. Do you know? Can you guess how many yards, just yards, he's on pace for? If I had to guess, 1,100. 1,009. Okay, that's he's Terry on McLaurin. pace for 11 touchdowns, though. And listen, maybe this is Terry's breakout, breakout, but more than anything, this could just be an outlier year for Terry McLaurin because right now he's on pace for 11 touchdowns. He's never had more than seven in his career, and that seven came in his rookie year, I believe. Other than that, he's been a four to five touchdown guy. And again, Jaden Daniels changes everything, everything changes when you have a, an, an actual superstar franchise quarterback. But if he ends up getting 11 touchdowns, yeah, you, you should be taking over Mike Evans and all of these guys. But in the case that these touchdowns come down, he really hasn't had the yardage to put him over these other two dudes, right? Brian Thomas right now is still on pace for like 1,200 plus yards and still is probably going to get eight plus touchdowns this year. Uh, Marvin Harrison or, oh, God. or Terry McLaurin? What do we do with Marvin Harrison? man? <laughs> I don't know. 
I really don't um, know. I couldn't make him a sit this week because he does have the concussion and that we're yeah. going to talk about that play, in the though. injuries. I saw him use practice in full, which is unlike, like, un, yeah, unusual, what? I should say. He practiced in full today. Let's um, go. Okay, that's, yeah. that's news to me, truthfully. Yeah, he still has to, like, you could practice and still have to go through protocol. I I don't know, man. I'm not panicking on, on Marvin Harrison, especially on, like, a dynasty or anything. But I think for yeah. this season, Terry has shown me more. I respect that. All right, DK Metcalf or Terry McLaurin? DK. DK. I respect that. DK has had some down weeks, but I trust the upside. I agree with that. Zay Flowers or Terry McLaurin? Uh, that's tough. Come on. Show uh, some respect, please. I'm showing respect. that You're giving me some heavy hitters right now. I mean, Zay that's Flowers, back-to-back 100-plus -back yards. You know, I would take Zay. You're in, yo, you're going crazy. <laughs> and you know what? I and I'm a yards guy. You know I'm a yards guy. But that's insane because touchdowns are what make fantasy football – as dominant as it is, that that's kind of what makes these players. I just don't know. Out. Is he going to get a touchdown every week? Is this going to keep it's up? Looking like it, it, and going up against the Ravens, would I be oh, no, surprised if he had locked. another one this week? No, he's locked. You know what I mean? And he's a part of one of the best offenses in football. So is that's they. also moving me. So is they, and I agree. But he's not the number one option on his team. The number one option on his team is Derrick Henry. Okay. Is Brian Robinson the number one option on the Commanders? No, he's not. When he's healthy. No, it's it's still Terry. I mean, Brian Robinson is getting like 20 opportunities a game when he's healthy. He is getting he's not getting 25 plus like Derek can. But. I may have just lied. It might be Brian, honestly. <laughs> he's been a dog, so yeah, he's, that's he's a, a fair statement to make, truthfully. All right, that's, that's it. That's it. all we've got. Okay. The names. I, I'm not I'm not trying to ask too many because I see where your head's at. You're not a Terry McCoy. Yeah, I like right? Terry. Like, don't get me wrong. I like Terry. I kind of do. I just think I just the touchdowns. The touchdowns are what scares me because that's what's holding him up right now. Like to be on pace for barely a thousand yards, like he could finish the season with 980 yards. And it's like, damn, you need 10 plus touchdowns for him to finish as like a top 50 dude. Do you know who's Anyhow. ahead of him right now? I'm sorry Ooh. to interrupt you. Do you know Go who's ahead. ahead of him right now? In terms Alan of what? Lazard. Ahead of him, what fantasy points? Yes, he is. <laughs> he's a shocking number 11 right now in the season. Yeah, uh, Alan Lazard's dead now at this point with Devontae, but a shout shame. out to those couple games he gave us. Um, tight end start, not staying in the Flames here. There's been no Flames with this guy, but David Njoku, I think going up against the Cincinnati Bengals could be something, maybe. I don't know. More than anything, it's just without Amari Cooper here, who the fuck else are you throwing to? You got Jerry Judy, Jerry Judy. you got Elijah Moore, maybe Nick Chubb does something this week. Um, but outside of like, Travis Kelsey, Brock Bowers, George Kittle, Chan McBride, Evan Ingram, who I think is a really solid start this week. And then Ferguson, when he's 100% healthy. David Njoku is like that next guy up just because the talent is there, right? Like we saw last season with Flacco. He could be one of the best tight ends in football when he actually has a quarterback. And the fact that maybe at some point, hopefully, Jameis Winston starts. Now we're really talking about David Njoku potentially entering that top five, six and, you know, being over a guy like Evan Ingram. So, David Njoku, good matchup against the Cincinnati Bengals. If you're scrapping for someone, like, example, you have uh, Jake Ferguson on a bye this week, David Njoku, decent chance he's on the waiver wire. I wouldn't mind picking him up and starting him. Now, Mark Andrews has Here been in the water early in the season. He has. Last couple of weeks, he's been kind of cooking. And I say last couple very loosely. Mostly last week, where he finishes as the tight end six. Goes for 66 yards and a touchdown on three catches. By far his best game of the season. But going up against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a pretty miserable defense. I'm I'm staying in the flames here. Ironically, let's ride it. I there think that he continues this hot streak. He's been trending in the right direction. Last two weeks has had over 50 receiving yards in both of these games. Has seen not the greatest amount of opportunity, but he's making the most of it. Averaged 22 yards a catch on last week. Had averaged 14 yards a catch the week before that. He's having big plays. And if he can get into the end zone, which I believe that he can get into the end zone versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I love Mark Andrews this week. Give me him as my start of the week. Yeah, and this is this is the game. If when if and when anyone starts Andrews out there, this is the game to do it because you've seen a couple of weeks in a row, like you mentioned, and you have the matchup that should be high scoring. So yeah, I think both of those guys as type of I don't know, David Njoku is probably more likely to be on waivers than Mark Andrews just because of draft capital, but sure. both of them are decent plays. Uh, moving on to sits this week, quarterback position. This is where I'm going with Aaron Rodgers. Uh, I get the hype. I get Devontae Adams is there. I get the you know the possibilities of this offense, but. 
it's a really tough matchup you're going up against, right? The Pittsburgh Steelers are allowing the fifth fewest fantasy points to opposing quarterbacks, second fewest points as a whole, just defensively points allowed, uh, top two in the league right now. Their defense has been fantastic, but really more than anything, I'm just kind of scared of how is this pass rush going to look against this Jets offensive line, right? How mm. is TJ Watt going to go up against uh, these tackles that – Morgan Moses still coming back from an injury. Doesn't really look 100%. Tyron Smith has been one of the worst tackles in football, point blank period so far. Um, and that's really the one area that if you want to screw up this Jets offense, if you get pressure on Aaron Rodgers, that's going to screw him up entirely. I am interested to see, though, because the Steelers have only played really like two good quarterbacks, like Kirk Cousins week one. Right? Actually, good offenses, I should say. Kirk Cousins week one. But again, we saw that version of Kirk Cousins. is not this version of Kirk Cousins. And then Dak Prescott a couple weeks ago. They shut down both of those guys, so I'm going to give them their credit. But they have played some easier matchups. And going up against the Jets offense to be one of their more difficult matchups. Again, this defense is great. They have the talent there. Um, but I am sitting Aaron Rodgers this week. I respect that. He was in consideration for my set of the week. Not many plays I didn't love this week or that I didn't yeah. like this week. Aaron Rodgers stood out. Of course, you're going up against the Steelers, but I'm deciding to to give it a week. Let's see how they look. I know the Pittsburgh Steelers are an elite unit, but you have Devontae Adams now adding to this offense. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's see it a week, and let's see what you can do before I go out there and just blatantly disrespect you. But I think that your, your disrespect is warranted, that this Steelers defense is incredible. My sit of the week kind of getting disrespectful, is going to be Anthony Richardson versus the Dolphins. Now, if you guys didn't know, the Dolphins actually allow the fewest fantasy points to quarterbacks. They also allow the fewest to wide receivers as well. That also can be in due part because they allow, if I'm not mistaken, the most, if not second most, fantasy points to the running back position. They've been getting gashed in that regard, but their secondary and their pass defense has been pretty solid, especially when it comes to fantasy and you don't know what version of Anthony Richardson you're going to get. Are you going to get the guy that slings it 50, 60 yards down the field and you have a bomb touchdown and automatically he's now one of the best plays on the week? Or do you get what you've seen a majority out of Anthony Richardson, which we've seen multiple single-digit fantasy performances where he's an inaccurate passer, he's unable to move the ball down the field, and, and you're, you're left with a lot to be desired? If he decides to be the rushing version of Anthony Richardson, which definitely is in the cards, then we can be talking about him being one of the better plays. But coming off the injury, is he going to want to do that to his body immediately? To me, this is where I just have a little bit of uncertainty, and I'd rather play it safe than sorry, especially going up against the number one team against fantasy quarterbacks. I'm going to say Anthony Richardson this week. So let's just see Let's just see how low you are on Anthony Richardson this week. Okay. So you got AR going up against the Miami Dolphins. Would you rather play him? Or Matthew Stafford with maybe Cooper Cup back against the Vegas Raiders. It's funny you say that because I really was contemplating Matthew Stafford this week in my lineup. But Geno Smith has a great matchup in Atlanta. That's the only reason why I haven't thought too much into it. But if Cooper Cup plays, give me Staffy. Okay. What about Justin Herbert against the Cardinals? No, that's, that's a bit much. Give me Anthony Richardson. Okay. How about Trevor Lawrence against New England? I'm going Trevor. Okay. Um, let's see here. What about Drake May against Jacksonville? Same game. Did you see he got an MRI on his knee? I did. did they anything? said, I, so weird. They said he's fine. I don't know. He practiced in full two days and then got an MRI. I, I, I'm not sure, but believe it or not, fine. Drake May, if not for that, he probably would have been in contention for my start of the week. Also, if he wasn't playing in London, that also played a factor into it. I'm, I would, I'm going to take, oh, wow. This one's the most Stop. difficult by far. The matchup's juicy. Fuck it. Give me Drake May. Who would have thought? All right, last name up, Deshaun Watson against the Bengals. Let's never do that. Let's not okay. Let's not do that. Give me AR. All right, this this moves on to my running backs of the week because I am pumping the brakes Nick on Chubb? Nick Chubb's first week Dude. back. I am pumping the brakes. It's murderer. a great matchup. I get it. The Cincinnati Bengals, we just saw what Tyrone Tracy did. We've seen all season long what this Bengals defense has led up. But – I'm going to wait a couple weeks, right? Because I think Nick Chubb is going to come in this first week, probably get 10 touches, maybe, right? Ken Dorsey, the offensive coordinator, came out and said his workload is a work in progress, which makes me think they don't really know what he's going to do. They're probably going to see how does he react the first time he gets hit below the waist, right? How does he react when he has to really plan on that surgically repaired knee and take off? Is he going to be sore? Is he going to take any sort of, uh, you know, any sort of beating that he hasn't been used to, hasn't played football in, in a year at this point? So 
the matchup's great, right? The Bengals, I think, will be ahead for most of this game as well. So it's probably going to be playing some catch up ball for the um, for the Cleveland Browns here. But a couple guys I would start over Nick Chubb. These are all kind of like running back two ish, running back three, depending on um, you know if other guys are out, for example. So Chase Brown in the same matchup, I think, has taken over the RB one role. You also have Zach Moss, who has been a bit banged up with an ankle injury, doesn't look a hundred percent. Austin Eckler going up against Carolina. Brian Robinson might play, but even still, I think Austin Eckler is the kind of backup there is still going to get his touches and be extremely valuable there. And then Tank Bigsby, assuming Travis Etienne is out, I think he's set up to a really good, uh, really good matchup against the England Patriots. Now, my sit of the week is going to be one of my guys, James Conner, going up against the Chargers. Now, I spoke about it, the Chargers. I don't believe they've played the greatest competition. But statistically, it's been undeniable. Right now, they allowed the fourth fewest fantasy points to running backs. And Connor's coming off one of his worst performances in a good amount of time. Seven touches, 24 rushing yards. Pretty terrible game script, obviously, was in Green Bay's favor where they had to go out there and had, and had to to pass the ball for if talking about the Arizona Cardinals. So James kind of got phased out of the offense in this matchup versus the chargers. There is a, a world where they could stay competitive in this one because the chargers offense isn't that great, but regardless, this chargers defense has been really good and really, really stingy in a, in a real mat in a real test for them. Even though the Cardinals have been underwhelming as an offense, as a team, as a whole, I think I'm playing it safe this week and I'm sitting James Connor. Yeah, he would have probably been my set of the week as well. Um, just out of curiosity, you know, there's people who have James Conner in this, uh, uh, you know, between the two of us. Um, say Deontay Johnson doesn't play, and you have Xavier Leggett going up against Washington. Would you play Xavier Leggett or James Conner? Especially if Deontay Johnson doesn't play, Leggett gets a huge boost for me. I would play him over James Conner. Yeah, that's how I'm leaning as well. But yeah, this is a tough matchup for Connor. I don't think it'll be as bad as last week because he just didn't Agreed. play in the second half. Yep. But still, like it's going to be tough for him to surpass 60 rushing yards. And if he gets a touchdown, you'll be happy. If he doesn't, you probably won't be. Moving on, though, to wide receivers of the week. You had Anthony Richardson. This is where I have Michael Pittman going up against Miami Dolphins. I think it's just time to rethink how Michael Pittman is in this offense, right? Like outside of this being one of the toughest matchups of the week going up against the Dolphins, as you mentioned, since week three, when Josh Downs returned from injury in week three, Downs wasn't even like a full player. Downs has 35 targets, 27 receptions, 240 yards. Pittman, on the other hand, only 27 targets, 18 receptions, and under 200 yards. He's the wide receiver, too, on this team. Josh Downs has taken over as that guy, mostly because he wins so easily on that short and intermediate um, you know, portion of the field. But with Andy Richardson back at, at quarterback, you have to look at these first three weeks when Richardson and Pittman are on the field, you're looking at Pittman as wide receiver 60, wide receiver 66, wide receiver 57. He's not startable. Like I, I know you might be desperate. You might have buys, you might have injuries, but there might even be guys on the waiver wire that is a that are better starts than Michael Pittman this week. A few guys that I named here, JSN going up against the Atlanta Falcons, Darnell Mooney, same game going up against Seattle Seahawks. I think Demario Douglas going up against Jacksonville. Oh, I'd rather wow. play over um, over Michael Pittman. And then we just mentioned it. If Deontay Johnson is out, I'd rather start Xavier Leggett. My state of the week, Mr. George Pickens. Now, if you look in the title, I have an honest, serious question for you, Mr. Dells. Here we go. George Pickens going up against the New York Jets this week. Jets have been awesome. Fourth fewest points allowed to fantasy wide receivers. George Pickens has been bad this season. Wide receiver 42. Last two weeks, we've seen a huge dip in his snap percentage. Against the Indianapolis Colts, which was his best game on the season by far, his only game with over 100 receiving yards, he goes for 113, only game with over double-digit targets as well. We've seen him go from 86 snap percentage to 59% to 67%. You now have the idea that Russell Wilson is entering this offense. Russell Wilson is going to most likely start versus the New York Jets. Now, as a Bronco fan, Cortland Sutton had an insane amount of ridiculous catches that a lot of them resulted in touchdowns. It did not mean that it correlated to Cortland Sutton being this yards demon. He was simply not that. He was a touchdown machine, and obviously in fantasy football, that plays – but George Pickens has zero touchdowns this season. Some context. He did have a touchdown called back for a penalty for, for the Pittsburgh Steelers fans that watch our show. So I'll, I'll put that out there. But George Pickens has been wildly disappointing this season. Would you consider 
dropping George Pickens, or is the talent simply too much that you just have to have a roster spot for him, even if he's just wasting away on a bench? Because how can you start him? Yeah, I mean, it, it, you have to tell me who I'm picking up, right? It's hard to think of a waiver wire player that I would rather have over him. Like, I think Demario Douglas could have, like, some PPR value. I, I'd still rather have George Pickens. Um, okay. But I'm just looking, like, you have two games, really, where Justin Fields was – a really good passer, right? Like throwing for over 200 yards. You're talking about week three against Indy, right? Or am I looking the other way? Excuse me. Week four against Indy. Week, four. Mm-hmm. Uh, week three against who they play here, the Los Angeles Chargers. Chargers game, he threw for 245 yards. And that game, George Pickens had five receptions for 57 yards. He was wide receiver 45 on the week. The next week, that Indy game, 312 yards for Justin Fields, his best game as a Pittsburgh Steeler. And George Pickens, seven catches, 113 yards. That's great. But again, you mentioned it. He's not scoring touchdowns. He finishes the week as the wide receiver 25. So even when Justin Fields was playing at his highest level, when he's throwing for 250 plus yards and basically both of these games here, George Pickens still really isn't able to put it together. Like 11 targets is great in the indie game. But if you're not scoring touchdowns, it's going to be hard to have a top 15, top 10 finish. So I don't think I'm going as far as dropping him. But, I mean, definitely, like, not someone I'm looking to start, someone that's going to be on my bench until proven otherwise. But I just don't think there's going to be enough talent on the waiver wire. Like, do you have a name, for example? Like, So sure. I got a few names. I'm looking at one of my leagues that definitely have some better talent on the waiver wire. Would you rather have George Pickens or Tyler Algier? George Pickens. Okay, Jalen Warren or, or George Pickens? George Pickens. Okay, I, I think I agree with... With Warren Algier, I think I'm leaning Algier just for sheer opportunity. It's going to be in his hands. Juju yeah. Smith-Schuster or George Pickens? <laughs> uh, I, I, I'd still beautiful. rather have Pickens. It's it's not crazy, but again, we've seen one game with Juju. We saw a whole year with Juju and KC, right? He wasn't getting 10, 12 targets a game, 100 yards, right? So I don't think that's going to be the norm. Would you rather Rashad Bateman or George Pickens? George Pickens. I'm going to be transparent with you, Joel. Bateman's been kind of cooking. Let's Last couple that. of weeks, we've seen him have over 50 reception, uh, over 50 receiving yards, has gotten to the end zone two times. He's showing this season to be a, a, a target that Lamar has gone to. Not, not as consistently as Zay. Obviously, that's the wide receiver one there. But this might be the season that we see Bateman put it all together. I don't know. There's something about it. I feel like I would prefer Bateman right now, as crazy as that sounds. Yeah, I'm, I'm not – like, again, 58 yards, 71 yards. He had a touchdown one of those games these last two weeks. But, I mean, George – I think George Pickens is straight up number one, just a way better receiver than Rashad yeah, Bateman is. So I'll just hold on to, like, maybe he breaks out. Maybe he starts scoring a couple of touchdowns. Um, but also you're talking about Bateman who, like, is wide receiver two on this team. If Mark Andrews gets cooking, the third option and the passing offense, and you still have Derrick Henry there. So I'd rather just have the one George Pickett's on the Steelers. It's just that offense is so fucking putrid that I just don't know if I want any part of it. But yeah, Alec Pierce, that'll be the last name. George Pickett's. Yeah, I agree with that one. Even though Alec Pierce, the dude is just a big play machine, but then he goes and he gooses. All right, fair enough. Now, Mr. Dells, let's talk about some injuries, and then we can get into mailbag. So we, we spoke about a few of them. You had Chris Olave, obviously not play tonight to those fantasy managers. That stinks. Obviously, he's a great player. Marvin Harrison, you mentioned practice in full, still has to clear protocol. That is amazing to me. I'm shocked that he cleared that he's already practicing in full. That's a great sign. Now, another guy who who was dealing with concussion missed two weeks. That surprised a lot of us. Malik Neighbors, he was a, a full participant. He's looking like he's going to play this weekend. That's obviously huge. Jerome Ford and Travis Etienne, uh, these are guys with hamstring injuries. Doesn't look like Jerome Ford is going to to give it a go. And Travis Etienne's another one that I'm not sure whether or not he's going to play. I would lean on him not playing. Yeah, We talk about Tank Bigsby. If, if Etienne ends up being out, I know Dearness Johnson got a lot of work last week. But they were also losing in that game, right? They went down early pretty quickly, right? Like second, third quarter, they were down. So I think if this is more of a neutral game script, we'll see Tank more involved. We have Devin Singletary with the groin injury. Uh, It's looking as if he has a potential to play in this upcoming week. One of those situations where if you have Devin Singletary, I really hope you do have Tyrone Tracy. He's one of those that simply to me, he's looked a little bit better. And also on top of it, he's been secure with the football in his hands. And also, if you didn't know, 
He transferred from a wide receiver to a running back. He is more than capable of being a, a solid receiving back in his own right. And Daniel Jones showed versus the Bengals that he's willing to throw the ball to him and give him that opportunity. Tyrone Tracy is by no means a drop. He needs to be rostered in every single league. He has a strong upside, especially where you know Dable gives the ball to, to his better players. You're seeing that with Malik and Tyrone being a rookie, uh, being a rookie first year and getting that type of opportunity. He's one of those guys that I'm looking forward to to seeing his opportunity grow. You have what James you Cook. Think, um, sorry, real quick about, about Devin Singletary, because I think we're both rooting for Tracy to take the job. I think we both think he's the better player, but what do you think this looks like? Singletary's first week back, is he getting 65% of the work? And Tr Tracy's going to be involved. Like, there's no way he becomes nothing, right? He's going to be involved, but it's – is he startable involved, or is it – do you wait a week to see what the split is? If it's a split, I'm not starting either of them. If it's a split, that's just not one of those that I'm looking forward to. And if I'm starting anybody, I guess I would lean Devin Singletary because he is the veteran. And as someone who was a, a huge believer in James Cook early on – why are you giving the ball to Devin Singletary? He's always going to be that thorn in an RB2 and a young running back side. And again, I don't think Devin Singletary is a bad player. I think he's a very serviceable running back in football. But in this situation, Tyrone Tracy just seems to have a little bit more juice to him, a little bit more explosiveness. You also have the, the fact that he's a great pass catcher. And... He does not fumble the ball. That is more important to me than anything. So I'm going to wait and monitor. This is one of those weeks where I don't feel comfortable starting either of them. This is a, a monitoring situation that I think we can see Tyrone Tracy come out on the other side, but Devin Singletary, I don't think he's going anywhere anytime soon. Next, you have James Cook. He is going to go this week. That's huge. Uh, he was a full practice today. He's good. He's going to be good to go this upcoming weekend. You also have Ray Davis, who picked up a calf injury. He's questionable coming in. If James Cook's good to go, don't worry about Ray Davis. Uh, you have Rashad White with the foot injury. One of those where he could go. He, he's looking like he's questionable right now. You have Sean Tucker, who's been playing, who played an amazing game versus the New Orleans Saints. You have the fact that, <clears throat> excuse me, Bucky Irving, has been a pretty good running back so far in his rookie in his rookie season. Very, very efficient in his opportunity. I think that you can't start Bucky, in my opinion, because Sean Tucker had such a great game. And also this week, you're going up against the Ravens. You should start no Buccaneers running back. They're the number one defense in terms of stopping the run. So this is just one of those situations where it's a dead week for, for Buccaneers, uh, for the Buccaneers running back crew. But of course, going forward, I don't know how we're going to deal with it because you have Rashad White, the pass catcher. You have uh, you have Bucky Irving, the efficient runner, the guy who gets into the end zone. And then now Sean Tucker now comes into the mix. And then you have uh, you have the head coach saying that it's just going to be one, one of those situations where they ride the hot hand. So it's not a great situation, especially for Rashad White managers. You have Khalil Shakir with the ankle injury. He's going to be good to go. He's coming back. Nico Collins, we continue to talk about it. He's on the IR, going to miss at least another two weeks. You have Malik Neighbors, we already spoke about. Anthony Richardson, my my sit of the week. He's going to play this, this upcoming week. So, of course, if you are Anthony Richardson manager, at least you have that, that positive. But with the inconsistencies of his play, to me, it's, it's, a, it's going to be a wait and see. Jonathan Taylor hasn't practiced, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Dells. He has the high ankle injury. I'm leaning towards him not playing. That's kind of where I'm at. You have the the Chiefs, of course, Rasheed Rice. If you still have him on your team, drop him. He's not playing. Isaiah Pacheco, that's one of those situations where if you are a playoff team, he's going to be coming back. It's looking around week 11, week 12. That could be a huge boost. Cooper Cup. Has a chance to play this week. That's huge news. I lean on the fact that he does play. I think in a matchup versus the Raiders, this is a winnable game. This is a game that the Raider that the Rams need to keep their season alive. Right now, only have one win, sit at one and four, coming off the bye week. I like Cooper Cup this week. Do you think he goes? Yeah, uh, not a doctor, but the couple of clips I saw on Twitter, he looked fine. Like he looked basically what Cooper Cup always does. He looked explosive. He looked good coming in and out of cuts. So I'm sure they're just waiting to see like him going at, I don't know, 80% at practice. Does the ankle swell up at all? But yeah, you mentioned it. The, the Rams have one win. They're sitting here at one and four. They need to win, right? Like you can't really wait any longer to get your guys back out there. Even though you're going up against the Raiders, you need Cooper Cup and down the line Puka Nakua. So I also lean towards him playing. I don't know, like, 
he's not going to play 80% of snaps, but Cooper Cup playing 50% of snaps against the Raiders could still get you double-digit fantasy points. For sure. Now, last guy I want to mention, Christian McCaffrey. Now, it's been reported that after the bye week, they're going to open his 20-day window, 21-day window, which obviously that's huge news. You want Christian McCaffrey back in your lineup, but that's also pretty vague because the 21 days you saw it with, with Nick Chubb, he, was, he comes off the pub after week four, and we hadn't seen him for the next two weeks after that. Jonathan Brooks is another one that we're still uncertain whether or not when he's going to play. Also with Chuba Hubbard playing some great ball. But Christian McCaffrey is another one in those in, in that situation where he could be he could be active week eight, week nine, week ten, one of those, but you don't know. And Jordan Mason has been pretty great and pretty serviceable more than where right now he's second in rushing yards in the National Football League. So it's one of those situations we're monitoring. To be honest with you, I would target Christian McCaffrey. If you were a if a you are at the top of your league, go and find that manager because more often than not, this Christian McCaffrey manager is probably in last place or near last place, unless they were lucky enough to get Jordan Mason. Target them. Try and get him on your squad because when he comes back, inevitably, that is going to give you the push and the edge of course, to make your championship run because championships and Christian McCaffrey go well together. And that team that's desperate trying to to make the most of their season that could already be over, they could be desperate and try and make that trade to you and you can get him for a very low price. What are you giving up for CMC? Would you give up J.K. Dobbins? Absolutely. First name that came to my mind. It's crazy. Immediately, the first name that came to my mind was J.K. Okay, I... I want to be against that just because I don't know if J.K. Dobbins can stay healthy for 17 weeks. Like, I hope he does, but it's, it's difficult. Would you go with Brian Thomas? You know, because there are more wide receivers that play well. Mm, that's hard. Yes, I would. You would. Okay. You're you're more bullish on CMC than I am. I, I'm Listen, not I've been, CMC. I've been the guy that has CMC, and I've gone to the chip. I know what that's like. It's an amazing Oh, feeling. no. When CMC is healthy, yeah, sure. I just – I can't trust the Niners right now. He was supposed to play week one. The fact that they're like, oh, yeah, they'll they'll bring him back after the bye week. Sure. Yeah, I'm sure they will. I just don't think CMC for the regular season – unless – I mean, it's tough. Because for the regular season, I think Jordan Mason, at a minimum, is going to be a 50-50 split. Jordan Mason is playing too, too, too good for him to be nothing. I do think 50-50. CMC will get the high-value touches. Like red zone, he'll be there. Third down, passing down stuff, he'll be there. So he'll still be a reliable guy, but I just think there's a better chance he's like the running back 12 than the running back one. Let me ask you a question. Would you trade straight up Marvin Harrison for CMC? Uh, what's my team look like? Do I say my five and one, six and no? Um, let's say you're an average team. You're an I average keep team. I would keep Marvin. Marvin. I would, I'd be looking to move Marvin, but something that could help me win now. You know what, Dells? Let's talk through this because I'm actually very interested in your in your input on this. Now, this team sits at two and four. The wide receivers on this team, Brian Thomas, T. Higgins, Debo Samuel, Devontae Adams. Those Great. are the wide receivers. Pretty amazing. Yeah. Would you trade Marvin Harrison for CMC when your running backs are B. John Robinson, Austin Eckler, Bucky Irving, Tyrone Tracy, Nick Chubb? I would look for a different running back. I would look for someone that can, you're two and four. Like you can't, I can't wait five more weeks. Cause the thing is CMC, the three week, pre, when's their bye week, week eight, week nine. I believe so. Let me make sure. Let me, so I'm not giving you wrong information. His bye week is week nine. Week nine. Okay. So let's say they open it after week nine. We're week 10. Odds are he's not going to play week 10. So the earliest he can come back will be week 11. So week 11, we're talking about five weeks from now, right, at a minimum. And in week 11, say miraculously he plays because who knows? It could be week 12. It, they could open the bye week two weeks later in week 11, right? Yep. If you pl- Are you starting him that first game? Now, I want you to hear me out. Would I start him that first game? 1,000% yes. Obviously. Not even thinking twice about it. When I ask this question, Marvin has to go up against the Chargers, Miami, Chicago, the Jets has his bye week 11, ironically. Seattle's a good matchup. Minnesota, I don't know because Kyler hasn't been that great. New England going up against Christian Gonzalez. I don't know. 
Carolina should be a great matchup, and then the Rams should be a great matchup. But I listed one, two, three, four, five, six, seven weeks where Marvin Harrison is a question mark for me. You know what I mean? Especially at that week 11 where that is his bye week. And two and four situ and a two and four situation. If I'm not going to start Marvin Harrison over these guys, there's a good chance I'm not going to do that for these upcoming weeks. Would I be wrong to take the gamble on CMC? That's kind of where I'm at. Yeah, we just you can't start like you also can't start CMC for the next four weeks. I agree with that, and you I know what I mean like that. Like I think you could get, for example, Tony Pollard from Marvin Harrison, and he'll help you Ugh. immediately. I don't want to do that. Go look at go look at Tony Pollard's schedule. He's been cute. Season. He's been cute. Go look at go look at his schedule. It's been it's a, okay. You it's know, a beautiful dude, schedule trading. he has, especially See, when you I, talk to the fantasy you're playoffs. Saying trade Marvin for Tony, like you could do that. I I mean, if I needed a running back, I would rather if I need wins right now. Tony Pollard without Tajay Spears, he's like he's helping you more than CMC will. Why are you making me intrigued in Tony Pollard? Listen, Tony Pollard. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying Pollard as an example because he's someone that doesn't have a ton of name value. It's Tony Pollard. It's not like your your name, Christian McCaffrey, right? Um, and Tony Pollard this week he has a great matchup against Chicago. Or excuse me, not Chicago against the Bills. Um, and then his his playoff schedule I was looking at earlier today is is tremendous. Right now, With Jacksonville, Cincinnati, Indianapolis, and Jacksonville again. That's yeah, week beautiful. thirteen on Washington, Jacksonville, Cincy, Indy, Jacksonville. That's pretty erotic. I won't lie. I mean, then, yeah, he does have a couple of tough matchups over the next like five weeks. So Detroit, Chargers, yeah. Minnesota, Houston. But I mean, he's got a couple of really nice matchups. And these last two weeks, 22 carries, 17 carries. I don't know. I think um, if I, I was 24, I need wins now. I couldn't live myself trading Marvin for Tony. But Pollard. you could probably get some on top of it, right? Like you get Pollard probably plus another flex worthy type piece. You don't do it straight up. But the name value that Marvin has will let you get Tony Pollard who – I mean, what is going to be like a, a running back two at worst? Yeah. Like, and, you know, is going to have those weeks where in a, a plus matchup, he could be a top 15 running back. Mm -hmm. Would you trade Marvin? Is it one of those? Are we in that territory? I mean, I'm entertaining it for sure. Like, I think his name value is going to get you something intriguing, right? But I, he just hasn't, it's tough because he got drafted as a top 10 receiver in fantasy this year. And he's having a, a decent rookie season, right? Like, he's he probably on pace for over a thousand yards, but sure. he's just not going to, be a top 10 guy and that's where you're you're really hurting so if you could get a top 10 value for him of course like i would trade him for t higgins in a heartbeat right now i don't know if the team manager is going to do that but i have him let me go yeah okay like brian thomas another guy you named but just th there's other guys that are just more not even involved but just look better than marvin harrison right now fair enough all right listen let's get into mailbag and let's wrap this up Mailbag, all right. Uh, so again, if you want to ask, if you want to ask some questions, follow us. Pick a side pod on Twitter. Um, first question here is from our guy Rudy. He wants to know between both of our tight end starts of the week, who would you rather start, Mark Andrews, David and Joku? I'm leaning Mark Andrews because he's in a better offense than his quarterback, Lamar Jackson, not Deshaun Watson. I'm with you. I would start Mark Andrews for the same exact reason. Give me, give me a quarterback that's actually decent. Uh, this comes from Isaiah. Would you rather start T. Higgins or David Montgomery at flex? These are great options to have. Mm. Damn. To me, to me, David Montgomery is like he's a top ten running back for the rest of the season. Oh. I would be starting David Montgomery, but again, T. Higgins, I would, I would not be mad at you either. Honestly, I think I lean T. Higgins. And this, okay, this is a good one. This is from Terrell Barry. Uh, we were just talking about Michael Pittman. Would you rather start Pittman or Demario Douglas? Give me Pop. I would also start Pop. Uh, this is from Day Day. He's got two wide receivers and a flex open, so he needs three starts. It looks like he has okay. Devontae Adams, Cooper Cup. Josh Downs, Tyreek Hill, and Jordan Addison. So I think Tay is a lock. Agreed. If Cooper Cup plays, he's a lock. Agreed. So it's between Josh Downs, Tyreek Hill, Jordan Addison. Oh, yeah. Honestly, Jordan Addison, not a bad start this week going it's up not. against the Packers. Honestly, that might be where my head's at. I think I would also go Addison. Sitting Tyreek doesn't sound great, but he he hasn't been good either. No two is um, back. No, thank you. Yeah, I don't I don't disagree here. Uh, let's do a couple more. We got one from Drew. Shout to, uh, you know, great name there. With Justin Fields' bench, do I start Jared Goff? He's going up against Minnesota this week. Or pick Drake May up off of waivers. Joel, that's a you question. That is a me question because I have both of these guys. I'm sorry, both of them in our, in our main league. Um, I think I would stick with Jared Goff. He's looked, he's looked too good these last good couple weeks that. for me to sit him. You feel good about I, that? I don't feel great about it, but I also don't feel great about starting Drake May in London. 
I don't feel great about starting Drake May in London, but that matchup versus Jacksonville is as great as it gets. I think I would also take Jared Goff out of respect. He's been playing some really great football these last couple of weeks. I think that that's the reason I would go there. But if Drake May goes out here and balls versus Jacksonville, conversations are going to get started. We have SS General here. Cooper Cup or Zay Flowers? It's a tough one. Mm, If Cooper Cup plays, give me Coop. Cooper Cup plays... I would also go Coop. It depends, though. If I have a matchup that I look like I should be favored to win, I might just take the safer play with Zay Flowers. But if I need some more upside, I'd probably go Cooper Cup. Um, All right, let's do like two more here. Um, We have Sean. He needs to pick one of these guys. He's got Jordan Mason, Terry McLaurin, and DK Metcalf. One in this flex. Jordan Mason, Terry McLaurin, or DK? Yep. Oh, he's up. Uh, DK versus... Atlanta, Atlanta should be amazing. all day. I'm going to take DK. Jordan Mason, the Niners, who are they playing this week? Uh, they're playing the Chiefs. Yeah, miss mm-hmm. me. That Chiefs I think I would start good. DK. Agreed. I would start DK. Okay, let's do one more here. Um, okay, we got a trade question. We just talked about this guy. Would you okay. trade Marvin Harrison for Brian Thomas and Josh Jacobs? Absolutely. In two seconds. Do that in a heartbeat. I would do anything would- for that deal in my inbox. Would you trade Marvin Harrison for Brian Thomas straight up? That's a good question. Would you trade him for Josh Jacobs straight up? Because it might be yes to both. Wow. Honestly, wow. This this Cardinals offense is so mind-boggling to me. They just don't throw him the ball, which makes no sense to me. It's the best weapon by far. Throw him the football. I wouldn't trade him straight up for Brian Thomas solely for pride, but if that's gonna <laughs> if I'm gonna take that off my name because I have a lot of stock in Marvin, BTJ might be the better option right now. He's getting more consistent opportunity. Trevor Lawrence is throwing him the ball. He has mo- he has touchdowns. He has the big playability similar to Marvin, except he's getting the opportunity. I think I would lean BTJ and James and Josh Jacobs. Oh God. Yes, I would. Yeah, Josh Jacobs, I definitely would. Brian Thomas is definitely tougher between the two, but <sighs> sorry, I had I to know. talk through that. I'm really, I don't know. I think I would, I think you could trade Marvin. I don't know if you honestly can get Brian Thomas plus another piece. No, I, don't know. I probably not. You, Joel, be honest. If I sent you Marvin for BTJ, you're accepting it? No, 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 I'm not. Nope. <laughs> That is so, yeah, God. All right, and that's what we're going to wrap the show up on. (laughs) All right, listen, if you guys are still here, one, we appreciate you guys. We always appreciate the support you guys show. If you have any more questions, leave them in the comments section. Joel and I will answer all of them. We try to get to as many as we can. But if you haven't made it this far, leave a like on the video. Helps us out a lot. If you're not subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the channel. Turn on notification so you know when we go ahead and drop our content. Weekly Blitz, Riv Academy, Pick a Side. Uh, they do film breakdown also with the weekly blitz. Shout out to Jackson McIntyre. Uh, they also just dropped the pod with Theo Ash. Go tune into that. What else am I missing, Mr. Dells? I think that's it. Yeah. All right, listen. Take care. We'll catch you guys next time.